it's another week in the foyer reference household and we have another addition in our interview series ot Mm -hmm. love and splooshes and all of the accolades on stage and otherwise to crystal joy brown (laughs) what a fun fun interview we had if you are so lucky make sure you go and check her out on broadway in hamilton uh also raising canaan uh was a lot of fun and make sure you check out girlfriendship from the first of october play the interview Two-time Fred Astaire Award nominee Crystal Joy Brown made her acting debut in the national tour of the hit Broadway musical Rent, an embedded force in Broadway across five shows, including currently as Eliza in Hamilton, mustering mid-song applause during her big number burn each night. Screen credits include Raising Canaan, Equalizer, she Princesses of Power, and the upcoming Hallmark film, Girlfriendship, in October. From stage to screen, Crystal Joy Brown evokes all dynamics of the human experience. This extends to her activism in all forms, including Show Pride for Black Lives and Hand for Progress. A multi-hyphenate in every sense. Thank you so much, Crystal Joy Brown, and welcome to the Foyer Reference Podcast. Well, that was by far my favorite intro ever. (laughs) Wow, thank you. I'm going to need you to write that down and send it to me so I can put it on my wall. (laughs) Because, you know, it's (laughs) because like, you know, when you say it all together, it's like, wow, that's as an artist and as an actor, you kind of just are always looking for the next thing. As an activist, you're always looking at the world and being like, oh, gosh, I I can never do enough to make um, any sort of any sort of change so sometimes like hearing that you've done some things actually sounds really nice you know what it's I mean you. we're talking about yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> it's it's easy to forget when you're doing eight shows a week <laughs> so <laughs> so that's awesome and I'm so happy to be here with you guys and 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 chat about all of these things we're glad to have you so um how did you get started in Broadway oh man I mean as a kid I I kind of knew that I wanted to I wanted to be in a medium where I got to do all the things that I love to do, which was dancing, singing, and acting. And musical theater was really the only place for that. I mean, you could have some big, you know, uh, musical theater films, you know, but mainly it was like seeing stage and theater. And I, I went to the ballet. My grandmother took me to the ballet when I was really young. And I, I saw like, that was kind of my, my true, like professional first live theater experience. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, like this is, people are doing this. Like, this is amazing. And then, um, and then I saw rent on tour with my sister we were at the, I'm from Virginia mm-hmm. and we went to, um, the national theater to see it. And we camped out to see it. And I, it was like the first time that I had really seen a really diverse group of people okay. living in the city of my dreams, New York city, you know, um, and in a community. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I saw myself in that. I saw right. the the place that I wanted to live, which was New York. And I saw a bunch of artists, you know, trying to make it, which is like, um, which is that story. And I was just like, this is, this is what I need to do. This is what I want to do. So I went to school in New York for musical theater. I went to AMDA and I graduated, like I did the whole thing in a year and a half because I just knew I needed to just get to theater and get to yeah. get to like learning the hard way, which is just experience. Um, and, and I did the national tour of Rent playing Mimi. That was my first like professional gig. So I feel like as a child, I manifested that in some weird way. <laughs> but then, but then um, three or four years later, I got my Broadway debut in Hair. Um, I, I was the first person to replace, and that was kind of a crazy experience because it was, I was an understudy. I also had an onstage track and, you know, a lot of the stuff is kind of trial by fire. And I learned that show, I think in a week. And then I had to quickly learn my understudy, which was, um, understudying Dion who sings the opening number at Aquarius. And I think I'd had about, I had about one rehearsal for that role. And so it was insane. Yeah. My first Broadway experience was nuts, but I learned so, so much, but I always kind of knew that I wanted to be able to do all of the things that I possibly could, um, singing, dancing and acting in one place. 
And you talk about like um, in Rent with a diversity and even now currently in Hamilton, you know, everyone that wasn't into musicals would download the soundtrack and really get into the fanfare of Hamilton and talking about casting, you know, different sort of actors, not just necessarily true to history. Um, how does it feel being a part of such a production? And we would love to talk about the activism in a second, but how did it feel and how does it feel now being a part of such a monumental global shift? Yeah, I mean, I remember when I first saw Hamilton in 2016 and when I first saw the lineup, we call it the timeline, where everyone in the first number stands across the stage. It's a very iconic moment. And I just saw all of these colors, body shapes, heights. Mm. It was just the representation of what, you know, what we are, you know, and what what just a large diaspora of all of us are, you know, <laughs> like I was just like, wow, I see everything, you know? Yeah. And so rarely do I walk into a Broadway house and get to see that level of representation. And so for me, it was just like, continuing to further that message. And every time I see, you know, a kid in the audience that looks like me and I get to meet them in the, uh, uh, after the show and I get to meet them and, and have a one-on-one -on -one experience with them and them telling me what their dreams are. I remember when I stood at the stage door and talked to the artists that I loved and, and got inspiration from them, you know? So it means, it means a lot to be a part of something that has this far of a reach that can reach across people who never liked musical theater, thought it was so <laughs> uncool, you know? And I, I, you know, I like to be a part of those, um, those stories that kind of cross over, you know, like, yeah. like Rent was a rock musical, right? So a lot of people came into it, like loving that, like didn't really necessarily love musical theater, the traditional musical theater, but they liked it from this kind of edgier stance. And that's kind of what Hamilton has done. It's brought people in because of hip hop music and, and hip hop mm -hmm. and black culture is so, um, it is culture, you know, <laughs> it is the culture, um, that I think, it, it, it made a gateway for more people to be like, oh, that's cool. Oh, it's about history. Oh, you know, it's like continue to, 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 um, to open doors in that way. So it's always amazing to, to be able to be a representative in that way. Mm. So do you find that there's a difference between being on screen and stage performances? And if so, how do you navigate those two? Oh yeah, definitely. Cause like in a theater, you're trying to reach the person in the furthest seat. You're trying to reach 2000 people. Right. And so there is a bigness to theater and then there is a smallness to film. And I, I've like, I think that I've learned most things by fire, like just by trial and being like, Ooh, you know, like, okay, that was a little big girl, like pull it back. But you know, um, and so there's so much specificity that in film, like you, you just have to do so much less. And I, I'm so bad at doing less. So I'm always like, okay, I have to just trust. I have to have more trust, I think, with film and TV. Um, because also you can't do it again and again. Like I can do a show on Broadway and be like, oh, that wasn't my best. But then I'm like, well, I can do it tomorrow and hopefully like, yeah. you know, do it better the next time. But with film and TV, it's it's a long process, but it also takes so much time to set up. But then when it's your turn to do the scene, you have like maybe three takes, you know? Um, so you kind of have to have this ability to let it go quicker and just be like, okay, this is, I'm prepared and I trust yeah. myself. And so there's a different level of trust. I think that I have to have with film and TV with myself and, um, a more intimate, um, like, yeah, being more intimate with the camera, being more intimate with your partner. You're not yelling across the stage, trying to like make sure everyone can hear you um, and understand all five bajillion words that you're trying to spit out. Um, so yeah, there, it, it is a, an adjustment and it's something that I'm always like trying to figure out and also bring things in both worlds, you know, like maybe there, there can be a little bit more bigness in some film moments and, and TV moments, and maybe there can be more simplicity in, and tenderness and like specificity in the theater. So I'm learning from both and I try to keep doing, um, playing with all of the things, all the modalities of acting, you know, and, and seeing what, what hits. Love it. And you talk about not yelling at your co-star and I do love <laughs> London Brown and I am able to separate the actor from the character. <laughs> Even though I feel like yelling. Um, let's talk about Raising Canaan. Um, uh, we yeah. love, love, love this show and we love your character specifically. Um, talk, talk to Thank us you. a bit about how it all came about and how was it filming? Because we're seeing you every episode and we're like, this yeah. Yeah. She's here. She's back. <laughs> yeah. The craziest thing about this, this series was that I was in Greece when I got the audition, 
just with casually. my best girlfriend. <laughs> well, it was like the, but there was, you know, the world was still pretty closed, but Greece was open. And so my best friend and I, who's an accountant, uh, went to Greece together and and I was like, I got this audition. I was like, I don't even know. This is, I was like, I don't know. I don't, I don't even think I should do it. Like I, I didn't even have really any like supplies to do yeah. this self tape. And I'm with my friend who is not an actor at all. And, um, and we were like, okay, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just film it. So we filmed it together and I sent it in and I was like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, like this is not going to go anywhere. And then three weeks later, I get a call that's like, hey, um, you just got an offer. And I was like, wait, what? I, I was so, so confused. <laughs> and I was like amazed. And um, and then I got on on set and I, I'd already like seen the show. I know Patina Miller. Like I know Haley Kilgore. They're also Broadway, um, yeah. Broadway legends at this point. <laughs> and, and I was just like, this is so cool. Like to have, you know, a show that really is using Broadway actors and, yeah. um, and is also telling like an incredible story. That's like really strong, a very extraordinarily strong female, um, perspective, but then also like just the cinematography, like every yeah. single detail, the, the show is so detailed, which I love. Um, and which I love about it is that they really go into the nitty gritty and it's also raw, but it's also a family story. And what I got really excited about with my character is that we're talking about mental health, yeah. um, in, in this kind of kind of roundabout way in a very nineties way. It's not a very like 2022 20, way. Like we're all talking about mental health now, but we, especially as a, as a black person growing up, like you just didn't talk about your mental health issues. You didn't talk about anger. You didn't talk about your, your resentments or what was going on with you. You just kind of, um, pushed it down, suppressed it, you know? And the fact that this was something that they were excited to start talking about in a way, um, I mean, maybe, maybe Renee is not always professional, <laughs> but she, she's, she, for the most part, you know, she's, um, she's out here trying to, you know, support and be a representative of black therapists, black social workers. And, and I think it's kind of interesting, perfect timing for how we're all kind of talking about mental health and yeah. what we can do to take care of ourselves. So it's an interesting way to speak that in there. And I think there's there's textbook therapy and there's Marvin needs a bit more handling therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like she's she, you know, she she has she's very put together, yeah. but she can turn, honey. She can yeah. she can talk to him in his language, yeah. but she can also, you know, keep it together and keep it very <laughs> polished when need be, but she can get him together as well. And I think that that's like the fun thing about their dynamic. Um is that they kind of, they pull something out of each other that yeah. I, either one doesn't always get to show. She doesn't get to show her, I'm a snatch you upside all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and he doesn't get to show his kind of vulnerable, like I'm working through this, I'm processing some of this stuff um, side. And I think that's, I think that's part of when we talk about not just in front of the screen, but behind the screen, when you have black people telling stories, naturally we're going to cover territory that was never covered when I guess they weren't writing their own stories. Right. Um, and right. I think that's something beautiful about even the most recent episode, there was like a warning about like distasteful, like sort of portrayals. And we're like, why would we put something like that? And then obviously because they have like an Italian sort of presence and it reminds me of, mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of, is it The Departed? Yeah. Where you have like the first 11 minutes, which is like a HR video for everyone and what not <laughs> to say about women, about black people and that sort of thing. So to have that, and then you think about like other films that aren't necessarily written by black people that wouldn't even have that warning with all of that distasteful sort of language. There's, there's more of a care because the people are the experiences are the stories. Yeah. It's so important for us to be telling our stories and to be writing for, you know, ourselves, because, um, I also, I think there is a level of care, but it's also people of all walks of life having a better understanding too, because not the, not everybody on the creative team is of color, you know? And so it's, it's every single person having an awareness and having care for, 
um, how people receive these things, how people are treated. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's, it's an entire collective team that is kind of shifted and is also going with that. It's not just, um, the black people doing the work. It's everybody, you know, it's everybody that's, that's hired, um, that's making sure that that work is done and, and essential and, and at the forefront. Um, and, and a trigger warning is always nice, you know? Um, and I think we have to, because it's easy to become desensitized, you know, it's easy for us to forget our humanity. I think sometimes when we're just watching a lot of violence or watching a lot of, um, things like breaking bad or whatever, like we just are uh, like ingesting so much, um, that we also want to remind people like, this is maybe not how, how not to be, you know, or, yeah. you know, like have, have a moment to be like, this is like fiction. And, yeah. you know, we need to separate those two things and, um, with real elements of reality, you know, like some of these things are true lived experiences. So it is, um, it's a delicate balance. And I think that this show does it so beautifully. And I think having a woman at the center of it is very helpful for that. Yeah, so speaking of reality, you're involved in Show Your Pride for Black Lives and Harmful Progress. So how did you get started? How did you get involved? Um, tell us about, mm. tell us a bit more about uh, your, your endeavors in this. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I would say that Trayvon Martin's murder was like one of the first moments that I really was like, okay, I, I have to figure out a way. I was doing Motown at the time and we did a big protest um, in Times Square. And I, you know, 2020 was happening and it was like what I call the trifecta, um, Ahmaud Arbery, uh, uh, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, George Floyd. It was just like, and we're all sitting there and just watching this. And I think it was the first time that people couldn't look away and be like, well, I'm busy, you know, I'm doing this and be like distracted. And it was just, it became so untenable um, that it was like, even though COVID was running rampant, like, it was just like, I'm, I have to go to the streets, you know, I have to go outside and I have to go and be a body. I have to be a number, you know, so that people know, um, regardless of what happens, it became very like life and death because I want my children to grow up in a world where they are not terrified of the people we pay to protect them, but they're not terrified to, um, have conversations at school about, their sexual identity or their, um, or race, you know, I, I want them to feel like they are truly free. Um, and I, and I want to feel free. (laughs) I want to feel free to have those, those rights as well. And I don't want to be scared every time I walk outside. So, you know, I was, it was June of 2020 and I was just like, okay, gay pride's not going to happen, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, and being a person who identifies as queer, I was like, how do I merge Broadway and gay pride and, and, and and 11 dates. (laughs) And I wanted it to to coincide with, I wanted it to to coincide with, um, what would have been gay pride weekend. And it was just a bunch of phone calls, a bunch of like, okay, who can do this and who wants to help? We got all of these organizations together. I called my doctor and I was like, will you do COVID testing? And she was like, absolutely. We got, um, we got how many organizations? We got the gay men's health. We got, um, and we got STD testing. We got so many things, but the number one thing that I think we got was like this amazing community to come together at, in Times Square. And we marched to Stonewall and we, um, and it was really just a colorful celebration of life and also incorporating Broadway and theater as best as we could. I mean, we had a full stage and a full sound system. Um, <laughs> I really, truly don't know how we pulled it off, but we did. And it was just kind of the spark to be like, okay, wow, like we, I can do something, we can do things and we have to start voicing what's going on. So then we had a meeting with Hamilton, like we have this massive platform you know, what are we doing in this moment? What can we do? And this show represents so many people that, you know, what, what do we want to say with it? And we got together and we had, um, two people from each company come together because we had like five, five, uh, North American companies. And we just started figuring out organizations to work with, like until freedom boat riders. And we started doing, um, letter writing parties. We started doing fundraisers and, um, for anything, it was, we had a big vote 
in 2020. So we were just like, okay, how do we get people out to vote? How do we register people? How do we, um, what are our focuses? And then now we just are figuring out things to do in various communities. Monthly, we have, we have things that we talk about to try to get people engaged in either democracy or understanding like, you know, certain cult, uh, certain elements of AAPI culture that you may not know or from the perspective of one of our castmates. Um, so it's been interesting, like growing the social justice arm and like social awareness arm of the, of the company and just seeing where it can go and working with incredible people who are excited, obviously, to work with the brand, but then also to do good. I'm talking about marching at Stonewall, understanding like the historical context, because a lot of the activists for the queer movement were black trans women. So it's yes. so important to know that history and also to be about it. Like if Hamilton is about revolution, we're about it. You know, we're here and we're out and yeah. we're helping. Yeah, I mean, it, and that was one of the things predominantly for um, Pride for All Black Lives because there was a, the hashtag All Black Lives. Yeah. I, we really wanted to talk about the trans, uh, our trans siblings who do not get the level of press that, you know, our cis siblings do. Um, so uh, that was one thing that we really wanted to shine a, a, a spotlight on. And we had incredible performers and speakers um, that kind of just continued to share their experiences. And it's traumatic, you know, but it's also that we have to hear these stories so that we can have a better understanding of, of what is going on mm -hmm. and what is happening, you know, outside of our, our understanding, right. And, and have a better and more compassion for what other people are experiencing. And we have to make sure that we have to give voice to as many people as possible. That to me is a true free democracy. And, you know, every corporation has a ways to go, like every company, you know, and, and putting your money where your mouth is and putting your practices and policies where your mouth is, is important. And it's always hard to hold people up to that standard, but I'm grateful that I'm in a position and I'm in like, I feel as though I can hopefully continue to make some change across Broadway and in small ways, big ways, however I can, because there is still a lot of work to do. Yeah. You're multi-talented, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> your music has been commissioned in TV shows. How does your creative process um, look like? Ooh, oh my gosh, my creative process looks insane. I, that's what it, I mean. I, I I could show you a script right now that I I just uh, every single word, especially if I'm playing someone real. I love to do research. Like right now, I'm working on. Um, the Louis Armstrong musical mm. and um, and I'm playing a real person. And so I'm just like trying to find as much research as I possibly can. I do a lot of, if I'm creating the person, I do a lot of back, you know, backstory. I'm a, I'm a writer as well. So I like to write like, okay, like this is what, you know, this is where I'm from. This is where I grew up. And then I go through and I tr really try to read the text as if I was a writer, you know, like what, what did the writer truly mean by this? And if I have access to the writer, you know, I want to have those conversations as best as I can to be like, what, what's the intention here? Like what, um, how do you see this character? And what was one of the amazing things about Hamilton is I got to have like a meeting with Ron Chernow, who wrote the book that Lynn read and got inspired by. And he talked so beautifully and elegantly about Eliza. And I, I was just like, I just got like that almost firsthand information about her. Um, but I dissect scripts. Like it, it looks like hieroglyphics all over the, the <laughs> red string. <laughs> oh, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have friends So with filming like a movie or something, you film it all out of order. Yeah. So you have to kind of keep order. So you do, it does look like a murder board, you know, <laughs> like in your house. You're like, wait, okay, that scene, that happens here. And this is this, and that's, I have to remember to have this moment because sometimes you're like, you're jumping into a scene where you're like, okay, it's three days later and you've had this fight and you're like, wait, we haven't had that fight yet. So I have to imagine what that fight would have felt like and how I'm going to yeah. feel on the other end of it, you know, um, cause things are just not always going to line up chronologically. Um, so it's, it's interesting to kind of play with that and, and to, I like to dig into the text. Like, that's my favorite thing. I love words. So it's just like, I want to, I want to know, and I want to like ask the director really annoying questions, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, and, and to see like really what their vision is. Like, I always, I feel like it's so collaborative and I try to be as collaborative as possible. So I want to know like what their vision is for this moment so that I can 
hopefully give them what they what they envision and surprise them with something as well you know I'm assuming one of your pet peeves is like a cryptic text or like a okay (laughs) yeah I mean well it's fun because it's like well I mean I'm never gonna do it the same way twice you know like even with Hamilton like as much as you can easily do like people always go oh how do you do eight shows in a week and keep it fresh it's like nothing is ever the same. Like you're never the same, you know, you wake up that day and you're like a completely different person. You know, you're like, Oh my nose, this, this nostril stuffy, like this hurts that aches, you know, (laughs) I don't feel good. You know, someone just sent you some crazy message. You're in a different headspace, you know, um, or you fought with your partner that day and you're just, you come in with a different energy every single day. So it's always different. And so I try to, I try to keep things and try to do things um, as like in the moment as possible. I I think staying present is really important. It's like, you can do all the research you want and Mm. then staying as present when you have someone like London, like you can't really craft that, you know, you have to just kind of play (laughs) off what he's giving you, you know, like he's going to give you a whole bunch of things. And, and sometimes like he will change up lines a little bit. He'll like add his things. He's constantly eating, you know, how does the eating make me feel, (laughs) you know, like, (laughs) you know, it's like, so you really like, for me, it's like playing off that really fun energy and seeing like, what is he going to do? And then playing off that and being the like given the freedom because sometimes they're like, okay, we got the take. Now let's just do one, yeah, whatever. Like you know the scene. Let's just do it for for fun. And then a lot of times that's what they end up using because it's like the most improv or organic, you know, moments, and they want to capture that like real reaction. So you do your research and then you kind of let it all go. Because <laughs> even in the most recent episode, that um the diner scene, you were yeah. like. So you'll remember this coffee and then London Brown has got like all of this food around. <laughs> right. Yeah. Full, I mean, full meal. And it's like, no, we just came for coffee, but okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it's his thing. And like, I love when some actors like, like Brad Pitt always eats too. Like it's a, it's a really cool, not only device, but it's just like, yeah, it, it, I was like, okay, how am I going to how do I look at him when he's eating? You know, like, do I judge it? Do I enjoy it? Like, if it does it, it does it arouse me at all? Like, it's kind of fun to play with that. Like, yeah. Does oh, it make I feel, me angry? I feel what the is sexual it? tension. He's a very <laughs> distracting person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a very beautiful man. So when you get a script for a film or TV, do you find it that it's easier with your theater background to just memorize it all? Well, it's so funny with film and TV. Like, I typically as much as I want to memorize everything like and I it depends on if something is like really like if there's a big monologue Mm -hmm. because I tell you from nine out of ten things I've ever done you walk in that day you've memorized you've been sitting for six hours memorizing things and then they're like new pages (laughs) and you're like oh you know and you're you're sitting in the makeup chair going okay uh let me try to memorize this and sometimes that helps just keep it really fresh you know um but it's like yeah you can try to memorize as much as you possibly can or for me um but i i also am prepared for me i'm like what's my character what's the arc what's our relationship and then within that whatever has to change can change and i feel like it can just kind of click you know and it's like that's the great thing with film and tv too if you don't get it right they're like okay do it again and say the actual (laughs) you know with what you know you mess up lin-manuel's words and everyone in the audience is like yeah we know it (laughs) you know (laughs) like you know i i one time messed up um really bad in rent and i but i have this like amazing ability to fit in fake words to where it's supposed to go. So it'll sound like, um, like it'll sound like the writing, but it's not what's written. And I had someone at the, after the show, like say, Oh my gosh, did they rewrite that song? I was like, no, no, I just made up words and put them in there. (laughs) And, (laughs) and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Jonathan Larson is turning in his grave right now. And I will never do that again, but yeah, with theater, you have to be so like, DLP dead letter perfect and with film and tv there's something like they're trying to catch a moment you know so things kind of can roll off a little bit easier and things change especially with tv shows so you're an equalizer how was it working with Queen Latifah I cried (laughs) (laughs) we cried we cried watching you (laughs) I cried I I just I 
I walked on set and she was like, welcome to the family. And I just went, (laughs) (laughs) I just, I just, I was like, I'm so sorry. I just sat in makeup for like two hours. And I was just like, I'm just so happy to be here. And I think you're so amazing. And she's like, I think you're amazing. And I was like, I can't do not to say that. Like, you know, I was like, let's just do the scene. And she was also one of those people, like kind of like London, where it's just like, she's fast and loose, you know, like, and she would get the script, she'd look at it. And she'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 All right. And kind of just like put it away and be like, I'm going to ingest this. Like it would be most of the script, but it would be her, you know, and like she would add her nuances or be like, this is how I think it should feel and move. And like, and I love working with her in that way because she was just like, she's like, oh, she's just she was easy. You know, she was like very welcoming as nice as you think that she's actually going to be probably more so than she even needs to be. Um, you know, and, and just kind of like, like excited to do it. Like, she's like, let's go, let's go. Like, she just has all of this energy and I truly don't know how. Um, and, and she was just very like supportive. So yeah, she's, she's queen for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, and lastly, you've got yeah. all the budget in the world. You've got all the cast you want for a Broadway production of your oh my life gosh. so far. What is it called? What of yeah. my life so far? Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. All the budget in the world, all the cast in the world. Oh my God. Who would even play me? Would I play me? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh my God. Oh gosh. The first thing that came to me, the struggle is real. That doesn't sound uplifting. <laughs> it's real though. But, <laughs> but it, it gets like, it, it is constantly like, you're constantly pushing yourself, you know, like, um, and you're constantly, especially as a black artist, like I truly, truly believe that we have to work so much harder and we have to, to get really half as far in any industry and particularly in art, you know? Um, so I feel like, yeah, it's, um, Oh no. Would be, and the show goes on because through all of the things, theater, storytelling, um, film and TV has always been my rock and my anchor. Mm. And it's like, that that's my happy place getting to create and perform and, um, connect with people and connect on this really deep level is, is the the best job for me in the world. And that's the moments where I think like, I really find my, my peace and my joy. And even when I can sit back and go, like when I get to see the audience afterwards, um, and meet, sometimes meet the audience. And if someone's crying and they cry in my arms and we just like have a shared experience, it's like, I can think of that moment when I'm, you know, struggling, you know, when the struggle is real and be lifted up and go, okay, you know, like, this is why we do this. This is, there is something um, really compelling and great in this, you know, world of storytelling. And we need to tell more stories and we need to tell more diverse stories and, and continue to connect to our compassion and humanity. Thank you so much for your time. You are literally oh, thank everywhere. Thank you guys so much for having me. To see it. You're literal sunshine. <laughs> thank you. I loved having oh, you. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. You've been so awesome. Amazing questions. And, and I really, really, really appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank uh, you so, much. so obviously on Broadway, Hamilton, um, raising yeah. Hayden, girl friendship in October. On Octo- yeah, October 1st. Um, where else can we find you when you want us to find you on socials and that sort of thing? Oh, yes. Um, I am on Instagram at Crystal Joy Brown and TikTok at Only KJB. And you can check out my website, thekjb.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you guys. You're wonderful. Thank you.